Hi folks, Mike Renato here with Athletic Motion Golf. Now, spring is here, we've got pollen everywhere. We just saw the Masters, and a lot of you are getting those games out of hibernation, especially when it comes to the short game. And I know around here, around the south, that means a lot of the dormant Merbuna is starting to come back through, and everybody's wanting to get that short game sharp and in control. One of the questions we get all the time is what method do you like in the short game? Do you Steve Stricker it? Do you hinge and hold? Do you lag and hold? I've heard that one recently. So let's take a look at some of these, mainly the hinge and hold or lag and hold, whichever one you want to call it, and just see the validity of it and see what you can learn from it and maybe what you can't learn from it. Stay tuned. All right, so the term hinge and hold basically came, became popular uh, with Phil Mickelson, right? He's the one that kind of coined the term, uh, as far as I know, came out with the DVD series, a book, all those things. And he coined the term, he hinges it back and holds it through. And a lot of golfers, right, if you read any online forums, a lot of golfers have found some success with that. A lot of golfers have kind of struggled trying to implement that. And it, it basically boils down to this. I have zero problem with a Hall of Famer especially a magician, just a brilliant short game artist, coming up with a term that he uses that describes his feel for the short game, right? That's, that's what he plays with, that's what he made his name on. All those things, that's no problem. The difficulty comes in when you have instructors adopting a term, maybe like a lag and hold, anything, wrist angles, and then holding those wrist angles. Any term associated with those areas, trying to teach golfers that, that's when there's a big disconnect with describing a player's feel and now teaching it as something that's factually happening because the two could not be farther apart. So let's take a look at what happens in a hinge and hold. So you have a wedge, 60 degree wedge, take the club back, you hinge it, right? This 90 degree angle you hear everyone talk about. And then the term, that's the term hinge, and now we've got the term hold. So we want to hold this angle, hold this angle, hold this angle, hold this angle. Now, let me show you the difficulty with that and actually why it doesn't even exist. So I've got the ball here. Get my nice hinge going. Now I'm not going to do anything goofy. I'm just going to hold this angle, right? That's what we're supposed to do, hold this angle. Nothing goofy coming down, nothing goofy coming down, nothing goofy coming down. There, that's actually holding the angle, somewhere in there. Folks, I'm 16, 18 inches away from the golf ball. Um, I'm not gonna hit a good pitch shot from here. So, holding the angle that you create back here, again, we'll do it again, real slow. Hinge, hold, 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 I'm turning, I'm hinging, I'm holding, I'm turning, I'm turning, and I just missed the ball by 16 inches. So. Right off the bat, it's not really a literal term. It's not really something that should be taught, in my opinion, because golfers will wind up trying to do what they're told, right? They're gonna hinge, and then they're gonna hold, and then they're gonna say, there's no way this club is getting to this ball, so then I'm gonna try to keep manufacturing something, so I'm taking my hands farther down, farther forward, and then folks, if you wanna play pitch shots from that position, you're gonna wind up taking up bowling very soon because you're not gonna have fun. You're gonna develop the hips, you're gonna develop the chunks. You're gonna be serving chili with your short game, all of those things, and it's gonna get ugly very quick. So the term hinge and hold, I believe we could say it's a feel at best. It happens for no one at all. No one you've seen on TV does this move. Change directions on you. Now watch what's leading into the golf ball. It ain't the sweet spot, folks. All I've done is turn and held. This hosel, this shiny <laughs> chrome bar here is now leading ahead of the sweet spot. If you do that long enough and late enough, if that's your intent, if that's what you've been told to do, heaven forbid, told to do, you are gonna present this more often than not into the back of the ball or the side of the ball or just, you know, at some weird angle to the golf ball and it's not gonna be a pretty shot. Everyone's hit them and it's not fun. 
There's no magic fairy dust that's going to somehow get this sweet spot around this hosel, add loft back to the shot, find the short game sweet spot, all of those things. There's no magic fairy dust for that, folks. We have to do it ourselves. And that all kind of stems from this idea that these things are bad for your golf swing. It's a horrible idea. Every great player has moved their wrist this way, this way, and this way, and they all do it in the short game. Even the ones who say you hinge and hold when they demonstrate it, they're using the wrist, the hands, to make the shot happen, and you should as well. The amateur golfers are such good replicators of what they're told to do. So there's so many golfers are told to hinge, hold, lag hold, and they coming down, they coming down, they're trying to find a way to get the club to the ball, and they're literally taking the hands out of the swing. It's a really bad idea. It's a lot of touch, a lot of feel in these things, especially for the short game. And I can promise you, Mickelson or anybody who else who tries to feel like they're not doing it are doing it the right amount. Amateur golfers, on the other hand, uh, who don't have those gifts, if they feel like they're taking it out, they most certainly probably are, and they're getting horrible results because of it. So let's shelf the effect. Let's throw away the idea that you want to hinge something and then hold it, and then magically down here by the ball, something beautiful is going to happen, and you're going to hit a Mickelson-type pitch shot. It's not the case. It's just not going to happen. So let's throw that whatever you want to call it plus hold out the window, run over it with the car, back over it again, run back over it again, because that's going to be a brutally bad concept if you do it for your game. Put it in the field box, keep it out of the literal box, and let's not make it an intent. Because if you do, if you hinge, lag, whatever you want to call it, and hold, it's not going to turn out well for you. You have to use the hands in the swing, and I'm going to show you just how normal that looks. So I am going to hinge and hold and hold. Folks, that gives me the willies. That was off. If that was sod, that the sod would have gone farther than the ball. I held it best I could, leading edge all over the turf before contact. That would give me the willies if that was my pitching technique, as it has so many golfers. Now, I'm gonna take the club back, hinge it my normal amount, whatever that is, I don't care, I don't know. And then I'm gonna start unhinging, extending and flexing all those things of the wrist. I'm gonna use these things to help me hit a really nice, soft pitch shot. And there's nothing easier than that because I have the right concept and that's really what I want you to take out of this video. The right concept is gonna take you a long ways because you're gonna know what to practice and more importantly, you're not gonna be practicing something that literally doesn't exist. Doesn't exist, it shouldn't exist, no one does it. So let's throw that out the window Let's learn the right concept, then let's go practice it, and I'll hit those nice, soft pitch shots. If you have any questions, I'd love to help you with them. Put some comments down below if you got any. Thanks for watching.